this same Jesus. Give the Lord a hand of praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Ribos trebe kerebes otolonovos. Yamando koporobos siaba kalalabas. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Worthy Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You worthy to be praised. You worthy to be glorified. Above you there is no God. Jesus, Jesus, you worthy. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands to the Father. Maya kaparabusi yama kalabosi. Say something before the Lord. Praise Him. Say something. Say something in praise. Tiyama korosi yama kalabosi yama kalabosi. Ramani kaparabosi yama katala. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Aya kapasha lobosike. Ria mama seke perebeshi. Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise once again. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give the team a hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, we, we want to thank God so much. You've done yourself a great, great favor by coming today. And I'm telling you, you will never regret coming to this place today. Now let's lift our hands and shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And turn to your neighbor and shake them firmly, firmly, firmly. And say you have done well by coming here today. Amen. Amen. And we want to welcome you and feel all of you in the house of the Lord. And uh, let's uh, settle down and fasten our belts. We are about to listen to God's word. How many of you know that the word of the Lord, it's all what you need to change your circumstance? Amen. 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 You, you, if we give you hands... Now, please listen to me. Anything that we can give you in terms of authority and power and what it can do to your life, it's lower to what the word can do. The word of God is the highest authority that is there here on earth and in the heavens. The Bible says he has exalted his word even above his name. He has exalted his word even above his name, meaning that the word of the Lord is above the name of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So anything that we give you other than the word, we give you something that is lesser in power. Because it was this word that created the heavens and the earth. So anything that anybody gives you other than the word is giving you something lesser in authority than the word of the living God. So when I give you the word, I'm giving you the ultimate. Say, I need the ultimate. Say, I need the ultimate. Say, I need the ultimate. So the word of God, Ilepaki, Ilepak Station, Kimukumaona, that's where we end. Hallelujah. In John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. I like it when it says, nothing that which was made was not made by the word. Amen. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that which was made was not made by the word. Hallelujah. And the other one says, speak the word and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word. It is only the word that can change your situation. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. So I want to speak from a title that says this same Jesus. Let us all say this same Jesus. Let us all say this same Jesus. Let us all say this same Jesus. Jesus Christ is the same. He has never changed. He will never change. And he's not changing. It doesn't matter how things turn around. Jesus Christ will remain that same Jesus. Now, before we give you scriptures, I want to show you on what is it that changes. If Jesus can't change, what is it then that has changed? What is it that makes the gospel that people carry, the faith that people carry, the religion that people follow not to have that same power. When we read the Bible, we read of personalities in the Bible 
that would arrive at a seed that has closed their way from getting to the other side. And they will lift a rod according to the command of God and the sea will just open. We will read of characters who were thrown in the den of lions and lions could not swallow them. Read of characters that will be thrown in fire and fire would not burn them. Read of characters in the Bible that will call on fire to come down to consume the sacrifice and fire will listen to them. Read of Bochoshua who will be in a battle and when they are fighting the sun is about to go down they realize they won't win over their enemies as long as they don't have light and they will command the sun to stand still and it, they will fight and fight and fight until they are satisfied that they have done all what God had commanded them to do and they will release the sun they will release the sun and we ask ourselves what is it that has changed in our Christianity today we are living in a better covenant they were doing all these things when they were sacrificing goats and sheep but in the days that we are living in Jesus Christ the son of the living God hand on the cross so that he becomes a sacrifice to our own lives so what is it that has changed we should be operating in more power now than them we should be operating in more unction than them than Bo Elijah than Bo Elisha I mean I'm talking about the power that would take Elijah not to see death and he just flies into the heavens because they walked with God when what is it that has changed what is it that has changed what is it that has changed hallelujah 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 the children of Israel would at times win the battles that they never fought God will at times rain down stones to fight their enemies on their behalf when they are looking. What has changed? What is it that has changed? What is it, what is it that we are not doing right? Because the Bible teaches us that if it is Jesus, he is the same. He is the same. I want to show you some certain things that I believe will help your lives forever. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. You know, when we do Bible study, there is what we call oral tradition. When you pass a message from one person to another, or from one generation to another. It is told, even in communication, it is told that when it gets to the third person, the message is distorted. Can I repeat what I said? And, and I wanted to get it so very, very clearly. The word of God does not change. Jesus does not change. But on how we hear, on how we hear, and whether we want to hear from the source or we want to hear from a third party. You, you don't hear me. The reason why the church today is powerless is because they're taking it from the third party. Yeah. And get it from me. When a thing goes from one person to the other, and one generation to the other, it loses the meaning. It loses the meaning. 
People do not read the Bible anymore. They do not have the time for the word of the Lord anymore. We do not have the time for God's word anymore. We do not have time for the word of the Lord anymore. And whatever we could be receiving this Christianity from, if it is not from the word of the living God, it has lost the power. It has lost the value. It has lost the essence. Shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and shout praise the Lord. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Are you hearing me child of God? So what is it that I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that now. We got to go back to scriptures. We got to go back to this book. You as yourself. Every single person that had an impact in the Bible was relating with God directly. Was directly relating with God. Directly relating with God. The purpose of the church is to point you at Jesus. Is to point you at Jesus. We are not here to point you at ourselves. Because once you get it from me, are you hearing me? Once you get it from me, you getting it from the third party. And it will ultimately lose that. So purpose of church is so that all the time we come here, we are twisted back. We are turned back to the original thing. And we get it from there. When we go back home, you go back, read your own Bible. Pray to your own God. Seek your own God. And then we will not lose that same power. And that same Jesus. And that same authority of the word of God will work for you. Amen. I, I don't know on how to tell you this. But anything that we can put in between you and your God is there to reduce the value. Not only the value, but the power that you should experience from God. Am I talking to somebody? 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 Hallelujah. And what is it that I'm trying to say to you? I'm trying to say, let's go back to basics. Let's know that the word of the Lord has all what you need. And when you stick to the word, read the word, start understand the word, the word will give you all what is necessary for your life and for the next person. Shout praise the Lord. The word of God is enough to give you all. So in Acts chapter number one, and want us to read this quickly. Acts one, verse number 11. Acts one, verse 11. Yeah. Who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Read verse 10. Read. And while they looked steadfastly towards the heaven, mm-hmm. as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. It was angels. Who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go to heaven. This same Jesus, you know, the old King James says, this same Jesus that you see being taken into the heavens, he will come back the same way. Mm-hmm. This same Jesus. Now, Jesus doesn't have, <laughs> he doesn't have tricks. 
He doesn't do things this way so that tomorrow he can do them this other way. He is the same. The Bible says this same Jesus. And what it actually tells you is that now we, 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 we're saving that same Jesus. We, we all of us from generation to generation we're saving that same Jesus Amen. who is the same yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he says himself before you were I was. So he was there before the beginning began. He began the beginning. So there is nobody, nobody, nobody that can claim that he was not there in the Old Testament because he was born in the New Testament. The Bible says before he became flesh here in heaven, he was called the Word. He was called the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Because before the beginning began, he was called the word. He was called the word. And what is it that I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that now he does not change. The Bible says all things can pass away, but the word of the living God shall remain forever. Amen. Shall praise the Lord. Amen. So the word of God, who is Jesus, is the same, does not change. Whatever it did to somebody else, it can as well do to you. Amen. Whatever the word of the Lord did to someone else, it can also do to you. The reason why we have the written word is so that we can see and read on the things that God did to others. And we begin to apply them to ourselves. But why is it that now it doesn't work for people? Because they do not read where those that were helped by God read from. If you read the same thing, drink the same thing, you will experience the same things. Amen. It's the same thing that you drink that will make you to experience the same thing with the one that drank it. Amen. Once we change the menu, we experience different growths. We experience different things. Jesus. So the church of today does not read anymore. Doesn't read the Bible anymore. It relies on secondhand information. The church of today doesn't have time for the word of God. Let's set the matter straight here. You people, you have time for social media. Daniel had time for the word of the living God. Amen. Moses had time with God. You have time with TikTok. Amen. So you'll never experience the same things. You can only experience what you eat. You can only experience from what you eat. If you spend a lot of time on social media, you'll experience what those that spend a lot of time in social media experience. Yeah. 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 And I know you're doing that in the name that the times have changed. Times have changed. It's time for technology now. It's time for, it's, a, it's time for knowledge now. I don't deny that. But why don't you use that time for knowledge to know the word of the Lord? so that you can experience what those that knew God experienced. What does the Bible say? It says, those that know our God, those that know him shall do exploits. When you know him, Paul says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. 
When you give yourself time, there is no way in which the things that you give yourself time to can affect your life. Yeah. You are affected by the things that you spend your time on. Can we repeat this after me? Say, I am affected by the things that I spend my time on. Say, I am what I spend my time on. You are exactly the things that you spend your time on. You. When we look at you, we look at the things that you are spending your time on. Jesus does not change. <laughs> what has changed is on what are we spending our times on? That's exactly, that is the only thing that has changed. That is the only thing that makes today's church different from the Bible time church. That is the only difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter and John, the Bible says, they were going to prayer at the time of prayer. In other words, those guys, they had a time of prayer. Now, when they arrived at the beautiful gate of the temple, they find one lame person seated there asking for alms. They said, such as we have, we give. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he rose up and walk. Why? Because a person that spends time in prayer and studying the word, that person does not struggle with sickness. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Child of God, you are a product of the things that you're spending time on. Yeah. Today's church has lost the power because of the things that you're spending time on. We have lost the power. The church of today has lost the power. We can't even cast out the smallest demon in your family because you're spending lots of time on things that can cast out demons. You need Jesus. Amen. You need the power of Jesus. Amen. I said you need the power of Jesus. Amen. And this power does not work when you don't spend time on what draws it to yourself. It doesn't work. You will try everything. You will use the name of Jesus and demons will say, Jesus we know. Jesus we know but who are you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me church of Jesus? Amen. What is it that I'm trying to say? Jesus had never changed and he will never change. His power in fact the Bible promises us that in these last days the power will be so much so, so too much so too much that Ah, Jesus, help your people. If we were to know on how much we have, would spend a lot of time seeking the face of God. Spend a lot of time studying the word. Spend a lot of time relating with God. Spend a lot of time. We will spend a lot of our time with him. The one that you spend a lot of time with will always manifest in your life. This is the last thing that I want to say to you. And I want to say it again and again. The things that you spend a lot of time with will always manifest. When trouble come, the thing that manifests is the thing that you spend a lot of time with. When challenges come, the thing that you spend a lot of time with, that's what shows up. And if it does not have power, 
it will leave you at the same place you have been. Are you here, church? Amen. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen. So let's have time for this book. Amen. The other thing that uh, I want to say, which most of us won't agree upon, I as well have a digital Bible. But this digital Bibles that we have in our gadgets can be changed in a minute because the server to that Bible is not with you. They can be changed in a minute without you realizing. And the verses do not read in the same way they are in the original translation. So as much as you have a digital Bible, keep this one. <laughs> this one no one can change it once you buy it and it's the right translation and you have it no one can change it so I learned to keep this one but again maybe before I sit down let me say this this one This digital one, it makes you to fit in any environment without irritating anybody. Can I repeat this? When we have a digital Bible in the phone, I don't have a Bible, I have a phone. It's just the Bible in my phone, but what I have in true sense is the what? It's the phone. So I can get anywhere, do anything. Nobody will, will get irritated by my phone. But this, it's offensive. I said this is offensive. I don't mean the book on itself. I mean when you're holding a Bible, you are announcing to everybody, everything, every devil, every, you are, you are making an announcement that I am a student of the Bible, I am a reader of the Bible, I'm a child of God, and I'm not compromising about it. There are some of you that people do not know that you are born again, even in your workplace. Because you hold the iPhone that they hold as well. There is no sin and it's not a law what I'm giving you. It's not something that you must abide by. But it's something that can just help you. Don't be afraid to carry your Bible. I don't want to make you lift up your Bibles because I'm born again. <laughs> lift up your hands and shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You, we shouldn't, even when we go to church, we shouldn't say we're going that side. Where are you going? So dressed up so nicely. Where are you going? That side. That's, it. That's how compromising we are as children of God. And this other religion, you know, we were blessed in the two places that we were in. We were doing church in town. We were blessed by very rough spots that were next to the church in all of them. A blessing. God had blessed us with pagans. Yeah. He placed us next to people who drink so heavily. And when we tried to move to the other side, it was the same. In fact, it was worse. I said, Father, I thank you. 
I'm an evangelist, so God will always place me next to Shebins. And, but this is what I want to say. These people, they don't compromise. No, no, no. You know, you'll find they put bottles everywhere. They don't hide it. And Christians hide their Bibles. Sinners, when they do their things, they are proud about it. And they would not miss the time. You know, I would, I would check these guys every five to seven. Cars will start driving. They are not late to the beer hall. They are not late. They know we're meeting at this time. And they are not late. And what I've discovered at times, you, you will remember you people who fellowship on the first, first church. You know, there will be times where we will say, but God, what have we done on this earth? Because there will be cars all over from everywhere in this world. They come with the same type of cars. Golfs. The city golfs, the, the old ones, they come with that style. All of them from everywhere. And children of God can't go to their things when they are far. Drunkards, they don't drink near. You don't know this secret? Huh? Drunkards don't drink their beer in their own vicinity. They go next door. If we say we have men's meeting on Tuesday, men do not come because I went on Sunday. I can as well go on Tuesday and I can as well go on Monday. I can as well go on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Huh? And you still think you will experience the same things that what Daniel, who were every day at a particular time, will open the windows into Jerusalem and pray. And you wonder why he does not get consumed by the lions. Because the commitment of a child of God unto the things of God will determine the level at which you operate in the power of the things you are committed to. Amen. Amen. Ladies, when we have meetings on Thursday, never ever a single time say, never ever say, I went on Sunday, I will go on Sunday. What? Are you a Sunday Christian? Sunday Christians, kima jagani. Jagani is a Christian just because we drink tea. But there's no power. You've got to be women of power. Women that seek the Lord at all costs. Women who do not mind to put fuel in their cars to go and do God's work. And God will always honor that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let's be engaged. Let's come to prayers. Let's sob before God. Let's come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and cry before God. Let's do what they've been doing so that we can experience what they, they experienced. Let's do what they did so that we can experience what they experienced. You can't expect to experience what they experienced when you are not doing what they did. Are you hearing me? Daniel prayed every day. Peter prayed every day. John prayed every day. Elijah prayed every day. Jesus prayed every day. We have to pray every day. Prayer is not only for January, please. Prayer is not only for January. When we started in January, we have lots of cars here. People were praying January prayer. What? Prayer is an everyday thing. In in January, we can intensify. Fast, 
and do all these things. But prayer is an everyday thing. Like you breathe every day, you must pray every day. Like you eat porridge every day, you must pray and read the word daily. Then the power of Jesus will begin to flow in your life and you'll experience the same things that all what did what you are doing experienced in Bible times. I'm done. Let's come and give. Let's come and give. Si vous allez, encore sous Jésus. Si vous.